TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. Right now, we have the Dow Industrials down 588. You get the Nasdaq off 243. S&P's down 72. That's some... Uh, what did you say? What are those numbers? Uh, seriously, man. <laughs> that's some heavy action on the way down, folks. We haven't seen this uh, for quite some time. Gold contract. Gold contract caught a bid. That's up 1030, trading at 1297. Silver's still a problem. I mean, it's pretty interesting here watching... Well, it's not interesting. It's a bummer uh, watching silver. Silver cannot catch a bid. Uh, you're down three cents, fourteen seventy-seven. Bottom Especially line, with gold up ten bucks, right? Totally, yeah. totally. And it's been a laggard. It's been a laggard in a big way. You get uh, light sweet crude up a buck twenty-eight, trading sixty-two ninety-four. Now that's not that big compared to like the news out here this morning that the Saudis are saying that uh, someone's interfering with the. Uh, they're tankers, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And so. That's really intriguing. I mean, you know, if there's something serious, that should be up a lot more than that. Sure. It's not. Notes and bonds, bottom line, that's ever ready bunny. They want higher price, lower yield. You get the 10-year up by half a point, 16 ticks right now, 124.15. 30 years up 25, 149.14. And King Dollar. King Dollar is uh, down 245 ticks, trading 96,885. King Dollar, um, you know, it failed the whole price. We'll see the 94650 is game now. Uh, bottom line, we'll see if we get any uh, volume on the way down. We get the euro trading at 112.53. The yen is out here at uh, 109. And that 109 inside the yen, too, by the way, um, gets real action going in the gold market. Uh, the pound is at 130 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We can over and take a look at that S&P. We have out here in all the indices, folks. We had higher volume last week. It did reject lower price uh, on Friday. But guess what? We had an explosion of volume. Bottom line, they're right back down here. Uh, this thing uh, right now, the SPY, I suspect, uh, let's see, we're 281. Well, 277 is game here, this little swing point. Um, and if we go intraday and we take a look at this, um, well, it all started before 9.30. Yeah, right. No, totally. <laughs> we can pull up the, on the futures, TD Ameritrade yeah, if so you like, even just, let uh, me just even as, uh, I think, uh, right here, because you can see, man, it was, um, it didn't start too crazy in terms of, that's last night at 6 o'clock, 20, right. 28.62. Um, you know, you had China retaliating, you know, with the headline in terms of, uh, I'll just pull it over right. as we're... Because it's, uh, you know, Friday ours going into effect. Well, Monday morning, they tell us that theirs are going into effect June 1st. You know, $60 billion of goods, and they kind of break it down. They're 5,000 products, as high as 25%. Duties on some other goods will increase to 20, those rising from either 10 or 5. Big numbers, you know, and, and the, the next question is, okay, then what do we do? So, I mean, that's a fear, you know, that is not the settling of things, and that's a lot of what's going on. Well, um, yeah, and these S&P 500 companies are going to go out of their mind, folks, because the bottom line is that this is where, if you're a fundamentalist, uh, guess what? You're paying 25% more on the goods you're taking in. Now, that's at a wholesale price, but that's still big money, man. That's, that's so the bottom line. We know line. they don't have 25% margins on those goods, right. so that means they have to charge higher prices. We have to pay higher prices for the same exact goods. Yep. That takes money away from something tax. else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that it's you a can't tax. Spend. It's um, an out and yeah. out tax. That's yes. the bottom line. So it's going to be a wild one watching this thing shake out. Uh, notes and bonds, you get the 10 year right now. Let's see where we're at 2.4. So uh, we'll see where they can break 2.4 today. Yeah. The, uh, the low is at 2.366. Pretty close, right? Within yeah. almost four. Four one hundreds for you know, um, yeah. pretty close. Uh, yeah, do it. Oh man, <laughs> I saw the, this, this is pretty intense, folks. So you got it's Uber. It's quite a daily chart. Maybe it's, go IGPO. You know, you you went public. Uber went public on Thursday night. Forty five dollars. Start yep. trading Friday. Bottom line, got up to like what? It, 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 I mean, let's it doesn't see even. It, yeah, the high. Did it even make it to forty five? I don't think so. Just silence that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, pretty close, right? I mean, I don't think it made it to 45. I'm seeing 4481, give or take, no matter what, if it did. But I don't think it even printed 45. Let's put it on a, a daily to see Isn't what that, that bar is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they couldn't even get uh, 
it's not going to matter how long we do it. What is the high there? 45 on the dot. Wow. They somehow got a, they 40, had to make they a, got print. a 45 yeah. prints. That's right. what I wanted to see. Um, I couldn't even find the bar, though, right, on, on a 10-minute. in terms $7. Of, it's almost down 20% from its IPO. Yeah. Two right. days. Nine, nine bucks would be 20 on the dot. L-Y-F-T. So. Now, Lyft is an ABC instruction down to 41. So we hit 47 thus far. This blew away. Now this lift is, this is disgusting. 62, I believe, was that the IPO? Uh, 75, was it? No. Was it? 72. 72. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I know. That's sick. Yeah. Um, they obviously had higher valuations than the market is perceiving. Yeah. And what's interesting is you had really, really smart people in terms of private equity money coming in at high valuations, so they were a bit off, too in terms of I, the number and that's why you know that's a dicey game private equity you better know what you're doing and that's why they don't let retail investors into the market right. because man to peg a market cap with a very small buy sell totally. market demand you better be right and usually they're coming in the companies are growing even if you make a mistake marginally in a year it right. makes up for it or something. Well, not the case when you're buying into companies at a valuation that's a private company of $75 billion. It's, it's a hot potato. Yes. You know, you're, you're, you're the, uh, what do you call them when they're, you're the private equity guy that you keep. Uh, venture capitalist? Yeah, yeah, thank you. You're yeah. a venture capitalist, right? I'm another guy coming in after you. Well, your goal is to sell it for more money. Yeah, and, and everybody's goal is, though. What do you mean? No, no, totally, except that what happens is that the, the venture capitalists, they normally want to get out either, they need an exit plan. Sure, they, right. they're a long They've been in deal. for a long time an already, and so when it goes public. you're in, then I call you, and I say, oh, my God, this is good. The, the so you're so sell it to me. venture capitalists? You're the venture yes. capitalists, yes. but you, know, you, get a, you put a price on it. Well, i got to hope that I'm right is that on that price. That you're saying it's 60 bucks. I'm saying, well, maybe it's 60. Okay, I'll pay you 60. You're talking about the IPO price? I'm talking Sorry, about. I'm trying. I'm, I'm talking about the. I think what's going Just on the first here is that, is that no, is that all because the way private equity is worked now, is that the reason that these aren't pricing out and an IPO is that they've gone. They were private for so long and they really got all that money. Yeah. So that's I where that's these where are it two all companies. Comes They're very isolated. I wouldn't group it as much private equity. We've seen we've seen the meat. IPO go gangbusters. So that's not the same. You know, I mean, there's it's just Lyft and Uber. There's, there's, they've overvalued the ride sharing market and, and the market saying, hey, they're going to be big, but they're already enormous. They're already, Uber's already even at this valuation. They just went public and they're, what, a $60 billion company. Right. Not the end of the world, right? right? You know, it's just they really talk them up. Um, because if you remember, too, they came in so low. Before Lyft went public, yeah. Uber was valued at 100 to $120 billion. They IPO'd at 75, and they're down almost 20% from that number. So it's way off of where they were hoping to oh, push that out doubt. to the market. And that's interesting that uh, Aziz saying that Icon sold Lyft before the IPO. Yeah. <laughs> Good move. Kind of speaks to that smart money, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. 877-927-6648. So if we, if we take a look at the uh, percentages, uh, NASDAQ has taken it on the chin big time. Uh, they're all uh, NASDAQ is uh, down 2.9%. Wow. You get the S&Ps down 2. Uh, Dow is down 2. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, some of the uh, higher volume equities out here, and you get some slamming down here, man. You get you get Apple down at ten dollars. You get uh, Microsoft of two eighty one. You get uh, Nvidia down uh, five dollars. Take Tes your poison, man. Look at this. Tesla's down twelve dollars. Roku's positive today. Good for them. We were oh. chatting about them Friday. Oh, God, <laughs> it's got to be great to be a, gotta be a shareholder and be oh. positive on today, man. Seriously, Ooh. sick. Yeah. Um, Tesla. I mean, they're going to be building a factory in China, right? I mean, they're they're. You're doing business in China, big business. Today's not a good day. It's, look at this. Yeah, so Tesla finally broke out its bottom. So this is going to be big trouble for Tesla. Yeah, and they have more woes than just uh, yeah. a, a factory in China. Yeah. But they're dealing with everything else, and they're going to deal with trade problems with trying to build a big factory in China. Um, right. So you get, you're down 12 bucks. You're breaking the 244 mark. Yeah. And that puts game, man, at 163. You better believe it, which because is we, we just dropped from, <laughs> what's the high here? 379. 379 to 150 two, bucks. 227. Wow. Um, in the span of, that's December 7th. Um, so, yeah, you better be, be aware that. Pretty amazing. Definitely. That's, you got some big numbers here. So let's go take a look at this gold contract. So, you know, we have gold moving. You have volume behind the move. In fact, we had volume all last week. Sorry, just before we jumped off Apple, I saw a headline as well that they actually just lost a Supreme Court case, too, today. I saw, if you want to pull up the Who news, did? Apple did oh. in terms of their store. Um, and so I think that's hitting it even worse, yeah. So iPhone antitrust suit. That's the last thing they want. So the Supreme Court, consumers can press ahead with a lawsuit that accuses Apple of using its market dominance to inflate prices in its app store. 5-4 um, oh, yeah. ruling. So that, that's, I, I meant to mention that. I saw that Look pop that. up. Um, that's a big one. That's what's hitting Apple. I mean, tough day for Apple, man, because they are, they're a huge company in China. They're already going to get hidden. Um, and, you know, you're, you're going to see more of this because there's some, in my opinion, validity to that. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm an iPhone lover, right. um, but the way that they control a marketplace that's, you know, only one of two in terms right. of the Android marketplace, and if you're on the iPhone, you have no other way around it, yeah. and they charge inordinate prices to even get in there. Um, right. So I think you might see some, and you obviously do. There. So this is interesting, too. So this, uh, this, so this is a 5-4 ruling, folks. Uh, now, what's interesting is that uh, Kavanaugh was a swing vote. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, there was an interesting article today I saw. I read a couple paragraphs of it comparing Kavanaugh to Gorsuch and just talking about how Gorsuch is uh, going very conservative. Kavanaugh is um, going with Roberts in more of a conservative leaning, but more towards the middle. But then they also said, um, be careful judging judges, judging judges, yeah, yeah. by their rookie year, only because it takes okay. them time to settle in and right. you don't want to just show up on the court and, and cause a ruckus, even though you're there forever. But interesting, yeah. interesting, no, just, it is. especially with that coming out. This is ahead of that. Because they, they're into the institution, which is, thank they God. They should be, thank no, God. No, totally. Of, exactly. If anybody should be, it's the Supreme Court justices. Right. Um, yeah, that's, so you saw 30% Apple takes of anything that you charge in that store, which is pretty crazy. So you might see that get hit in yeah. terms of, because right. I, I think I've said before, if you sign up on... Netflix through the Apple Store. Yeah. Apple takes 30% of that for nothing. And then you have Netflix only resulting in 70% of the revenue trying to spend billions to service. And I literally said to a friend, why would you ever sign up through Apple then or right. through, and it's just convenience, you know, and that's no. where, but they own the right. dominance, yeah. So if we take a look at the gold contract out here, folks, what you're going to see is that it, it broke its downtrend. Now, what you're going to see here, too, is this. This is, a, if you want to understand just like, Pushing with volume. You can see last week we were pushing a swing with volume. You had plenty of sellers up here, man, just couldn't ha handle it. But guess what? You we broke topside this morning. Now, on this break, this is also saying that we get a break with conviction. And a break with conviction would be you break your trend line, yeah. you do have wide price spread, you get yep. an accelerated volume. What's our man Bud Ralph say? Yeah. No, it's, it's got to come back down and test it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It'll, it'll get back to it. It'll go higher, and then it'll come back down and test that line. Exactly. Yeah. That channel line. Yeah. And so now, game is on, though, at 1365 yeah. uh, in the gold market. Now, silver, this is, this, is a, uh, this is a big problem child here, man. I mean, particularly, you know, you get the dollar down. Okay, so S-I-N, S-I-N-9. So it's like, okay, you don't have any buyers of silver, man. Look at this, you know. I mean, it rejected a lower price out here today, but it certainly hasn't got any strength yet. Um, you know, you, you came back into the strength from the 3rd yes. of May. Um, we got down to 1460. You're at 1477. Bottom if you just draw the same lines, it's almost super clear in terms of there's it, no break above that trend no, at all, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. Or even if you start, right, no matter where you start, even right. if you start at this peak, it'd be even yeah. cleaner, you know, right. in terms of, like, not even close. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's important to understand, folks. That, that, that divergence is important to understand. Now, if we go over to the dollar and we take a look at the dollar, uh, DXM, the dollar is, has some volume on the way down today. You know, we get 10,000 contracts. We haven't had that kind of contract volume at 10 o'clock, quarter past 10 in the morning. And I don't, exactly. It's a very few days trade wars are developing right in front of our eyes right. in, the, um, in the real time. Yeah. And so bottom line is that what's game now is that um, 94,650 basically is game. You know, and we'll see whether get, we get a follow. Sorry, was it was that the high of that bar? What, no, was, the low. I think that's a little bit lower. Ninety-four, oh, no. three fifty. Yeah. Uh, one fifty. One fifty. Yes, yeah. thank you. So, um, you know, we'll see whether we get follow through. What has happened in the in the dollar index is that we get one day of volume, and then all of a sudden the selling the next day stops. You know what I mean? So, we'll see where that uh, whole baby uh, goes. Um, Market wise, the. It doesn't matter what equity you bring up. Uh, actually, let's go look at the NDX 100 because this is the one that's getting toasted. Almost 3% right yeah. now. Yeah. You have, look at the only, the only What's one that's positive? up at what 100, is X, what XL is X? Energy. XL Energy. It's up 16 cents. What are they doing? Maybe some oil action? Yeah, I think they're. I'm just curious yeah. what, what pops. Uh, uh, electric, uh, what, natural, natural gas. gas maybe, maybe just. Energy related generation, transmission, distribution of electricity throughout the United States. Colorado, 52 week high today. Maybe they yeah. had earnings. Yeah. Nah, either way. But and now on the way down, you're talking about some major. Oh, I wonder if that's so pharmaceutical, right? Yeah. We'll talk about it more. But you, that deal you, with you, the generics. I yeah. don't know if and that's Milan it. would be one of them. That's would a generic it? one. Yeah, okay. Milan's down seven and a half percent. Win. What's Wins down there? five point seven. You get Tesla down 5.4. Maximum integrate is down 5. Chip stock's getting hit bad. Yeah. So if we go take a look at Wynn, Wynn said that they're going to maybe I was up in Boston over the weekend. Not yeah. to cut you off, but there was talk about, uh, you know, that new Everett Casino right. opening and being pushed back and how yeah, big it's going to be. In a couple weeks. Yeah. You know, but they, what the CEO was saying is that he just wanted to make sure there wasn't a mistake. Uh, no, that it wanted to be perfect. Well, that's what he's saying anyway. That's why he's pushing it back a couple weeks. Well. 
Yeah. Correct. Let's go into the Dow Industrials and take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow, IMDU. And inside Good the Dow. Good old Boeing. Look at this. There's nothing. It's going to be. Yeah. Come on, be Boeing or Apple. Boeing, Boeing and, and Apple, Apple right? There they are. Look at Boeing. Yeah, so Boeing yeah. will pull that up, too. That's putting 76 negative points. Apple's putting 67. Goldman, 42. I was just going to say, Boeing, you could see them. And that's where China's going to run out of tariff opportunities. And that's where you could see, oh, we're going to cancel all the planes we're going to buy from Boeing over the next 10 years or something like that. Right. I mean, just very real stuff that right. if you're a shareholder of Boeing, be aware. China buys a lot of planes. And if things really ratchet up, they're going to have to resort to other areas to kind of tit for tat. Right. Yeah. Uh, 292's game. We're at 342. This the doesn't even get into. I flew this weekend. That's 737 max. Um, yeah, right. My plane got delayed slightly last night, and I literally was thinking, ah, oh, I'm glad I don't have to worry if I was on like a 737 max because I would. If it's, oh, it's delayed, what's going on? Am I on a max? Am Ooh. I got no? Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Dow right now is down 550. Nasdaq off three, no, 235. S&P's down 69. Come right back. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors Investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's down uh, 559. The Nasdaq's off 246. S&P's uh, now down 70. This thing's not stopping. Let's go to our man Paul in Henderson, Nevada. What's going on, brother? Happy Monday, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good morning, Paul. Happy Monday to you, doing too. Doing well, man. I know you're doing good. Oh, baby. <laughs> These cryptos, they've been on fire. But you know what? I'll tell you about this Bitcoin. I think it's time to, uh, to lighten it up here. 
wanted to see if you guys could take a look at the chart and let me know what you guys think. Yeah, we got it up. So, we even pulled it up on a weekly just real quick to see kind of, man, quite a run going back to, what, December of 2017, is that? When was the high? Where am I looking? Yeah, December 17. I'll pull it even a little bit closer. We're going to put it on a daily. Um, quite a run it's had recently, man. Yeah. So, you know, when you, when you look at this, Paul, okay, so what we have is that uh, you come off the low, you had a few signs of strength, it looks to me like, I mean, there's no reason this, you know, can't get up into this, like, 8,400 pretty quick. So you look in July of 18. Yeah. I mean, it, it already launched, you know, the 6,500, you know. And when you look at this, just, you know, we don't have volume on this. But let's say if I just looked at this just technically, well, you know, it's a classic setup, man, you know, meaning that you go up to 19,000. You came right back to where it had strength and where, where the move almost really started, which is... September. The move actually started at 12, no, 13.30. But, you know, it came back there. It's like, okay, man, now you're game. You know, it's... You want to call this a classic? I don't know if this is well, a classic I mean, chart. I, I, what, I mean, what I mean by a classic is that, I don't, I don't, you know, you get an implosion. It's like a classic buy, that, that chart? Well, no, you I, get, I, I wouldn't have bought it. But you, you come back to a... You come back to strength... Now, I don't have the volume, so I don't know what happened yeah. there. Do you know what I mean? But I know, could argue that's like a classic to zero eventually. I feel like that's all yeah, my, my head goes. I'm right just there, you know. With, um, I had called back when it was at, in that 37 level, and I had a sign of strength. <coughs> Excuse me. You know something that I learned from you, Tom, and I. That was a point to where I said this is a high probability of, of a pretty good bounce. Yeah, right. Plus, we reward. had the other stuff that we were talking about, where we almost had the full 90 percent. You know, we had a really big correction off the, the high, so. Things were lining up to where, you know, the bounce could be uh, pretty big. At Substantial. That point. Yeah. Right. Um, right. As we see, that, right? More this than is double. The, and this is what the cool thing is, folks, when you, when you do something like this, okay, is that even if it's a, watch this, even if it's a dead cat bounce, it gets pretty intense because a .382 bounce will get you up to, is that 9,200? 9,286. Yeah. So a dead cat bounce is normally a .382. It's like, okay, man. Of that man. retracement. From, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, yeah. like, wow. You know? The only guy disclaimer when you have things go down 90%, they may not be behaving like normal Fibonacci is because things that go down 90% might, oh, like, this might is, not be, right, might be on what, the way to zero But eventually. that's why we brought up the Amazon. The Amazon went down 90% too, you know, mm -hmm. that we were doing this. It's so weird. I mean... And Monster, you know, that whole tech bubble in 1990, no, 2000, 2000, yeah. 2000 you know, hard to comprehend, but, you know, the bottom line is that it did get out, well, the whole market didn't get out 90%, but, but I agree, Amazon Paul. did. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. And I agree, Paul, what you're saying, though, is a good risk-reward when it got to, like, 35 or something, right. and it's probably, just like you're saying, it might be time to lighten up, because the risk-reward at almost 8,000, is it going to go to 12 or is it going to go to 4? Right? I'm sure, it's, you know, it's like, well, it could go back to four pretty quickly. Wow, if it makes it to 12, that'd be amazing. Do you see the two there? It's like, yeah. it seems like it's highly probable it could pull back in the same way that it got that pop. Yeah. The other thing that, I, uh, the other um, thing I'm considering by lightening up here is because we're getting into the zone where we had the first, like, real significant bounce on the weekly. And we're kind of in that zone right now where it, it came all the way down to about 6,000. And then we bounced. Uh, to somewhere like 10,000, something yeah, like I can that. See yeah, that right we got now. it. We're going back to, what's the date? Yeah. January of 18, yeah. And we got right to six on the dot, it says there. And then, yeah, we made it up to 11,788 by mid-February. Um, so the psychology side of it, I'm thinking there's, you know, probably quite a bit of bag holders that are like, thank you, Lord, that yeah. I'm just getting back to even. It chopped Let around there out, for a while. You know. Yeah. Hey, what's happening with the rest of these, Paul? I, I mean, there, is there, I know you're out in these sites. Is there, is there like, yeah. if, you know, euphoria or people, you know, perking their head up? Or what's happening? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, especially the hodlers. They're like, see, I told you guys, you know, <laughs> they're, they're doing all that. And um, people are, are getting excited that there's going to be more adoption, you know, coming soon. Yeah. And, yeah. um, over the weekend, we got a major pump in all the coins. They were up quite a bit. Uh, in particular, Bitcoin Cash was up like 20-something percent. I mean, it was, it was pretty intense. Well, it's intriguing um, that, you know, yeah. when Fidelity, we, Tommy and I were talking about last week, Fidelity's coming out, and you're going to be able to trade, well, the institutions are going to be able to trade Bitcoin on a Fidelity platform. 
So that's a big deal. It's huge. There's, there's no yeah. doubt about it. Now, the guy that, I forgot his name, Notwist, uh, the, the guy that has this big, he's just involved in a big way. He's claiming that because of this downdraft, that Bitcoin is the winner now of all these cryptos. Have you heard this? Have, well, I think Bitcoin eventually is, is uh, Bitcoin um, is going to be one of the big winners for sure. You know, if it's going to be the last man standing and the only man standing in yeah. the whole crypto market, I don't think so. I think that the top five that I track, that I trade a lot, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, EOS, and Bitcoin Cash, I think those are going to be around. Yeah, I don't think they're going anywhere. And there's a few other little ones like Ripple, um, which the chart of Ripple looks very interesting to me right now because it's it's way the risk reward looks good um i think there's going to be several that are going to stick around for sure yeah what well, was interesting i heard this i heard the interview with this guy on bloomberg right and they were asking him well hey listen man what can you buy with bitcoin and he came right back he says well tell me what you can buy with gold <laughs> and he was saying hey listen man the, as far as he's concerned it's really a store of value that that's where mm -hmm. he's going with it, which it was a, it was a cool interview. I yeah. mean, just understanding because, you know, he had a lot of good points that, hey, listen, now I don't expect this to be, you know, me and you swapping it all the time. But sure. guess what? As a store of value, people put their bread into it. And so, you know, we'll see where this shakes out. But uh, he certainly got action here, man. Um, there's, there's no doubt. And so we got Ripple up here. So Ripple's at... Uh, 32 cents, looks like. And yeah. what was the high on Ripple? Oh, it was over a buck at one point. $3, I yeah. think. Um, I'm struggling to get the chart as well on okay. this one, but yeah. So on the, the bottom corner there, Tommy, so you can pull up all the charts, it will say um, like 13 USD markets. On Ripple, it says like 8 USD markets. Okay. Um, and what those, do you usually pull up here for your chart? There, what, exchange up the chart. Do you, what exchange do you usually use for the chart, Paul? I usually use Kraken. That's what I've been trading on a lot. Um, and that symbol kind of looks like the uh, Republican elephant thing a little bit. Okay, perfect. Um, I, well, you, I, yeah. I got it up there. So, yeah, $3.34, man. Wow. Okay. Um, putting that on a weekly. Yeah, you know, I can, I can see that go now because, you know, it's interesting, Paul. Do, do you remember when, when what ended up happening is that Bitcoin went first, then one of the other ones, then one of the other ones, and all of a sudden people were making money and they jump into the next one, next one, next one as a trading vehicle. So, yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll wild, definitely man. be keeping my eyes on, on the ripple. I have a small position. I'm, I'm looking to do, uh, it's just, the chart looks so ready for a bounce. I mean, look at it. It just looks ready. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks for the feedback, right, Paul. Guys. Thanks for the call, Paul. Thank have you. a great Bye -bye. one, man. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We get that out on 520. NASDAQ's off 222. Na S&Ps are off 66. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 497. We'll get the NASDAQ off 230. We'll get the S&Ps down uh, 63. And um, we got, uh, so there's a, is that in Boston that's going to be out here today? They, I believe so, in yes. Boston at a Fed Listens conference. Yeah, Looks like he's doing more than listening. He's talking. Yeah, <laughs> shoot it out. So Vice Chairman Richard Clarida said the U.S. economy is close to the central bank's twin goals for full employment. I don't think anyone can argue there. Yeah. Um, and price stability, not too much inflation, making the current climate a good time to review its approach to monetary policy. So they prepared comments. Um, a conference being held to explain its reasoning for assessing its policy practices. Clarida said, the global decline in the level of interest rates that central banks use to keep their economies on an even keel is likely to persist for years. For years. Making it harder to support the economy during recessions. Point being, you know, we're at zero percent. We're not. We're at two, two and a half, yeah. four, whatever it is. Um, but we're at, we were at all-time highs before the trade nonsense. Um, what happens when the economy gets hit, man? And you, you got to, so he explained the decline in neutral interest rates, which neither speed up nor slow down the economy, increases the likelihood that policymakers will be forced to cut borrowing costs back to zero. Wow. As the Fed did during the 2008 financial crisis. I mean, right. this is not just a talking head. This is the vice chairman exactly. of the Federal Reserve. Right. Um, that development, in turn, could make it more difficult during downturns for monetary policy to support housing spending, business investment. You can almost go, et cetera, et cetera, right. et cetera, try to economy. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a worrying deal, you know, and you add on top of that, I had said that you're going to have an inordinate amount of debt. We're running debts that are unprecedented at full employment. That's not supposed to be how things happen, right. deficits. Right. Um, so you're going to have, you know, we have, we're okay now, but what happens when the economy needs some spurring, when interest rates need to come down, when the debt is going up in terms of servicing costs because rates are rising, you're, in, you're handcuffed. This is supposed to be the time that you... Um, pull back some of those to, you know, yeah. to, to know. have a reload when times get tough. And right. there's going to be no reload. And if we take a look at this, so we're at 2.4 right now in the 10-year. And you can see this, look at Germany. Six-tenths, uh, six-one-hundredths, negative, right? Yes. Forget Switzerland. They've been negative, they're negative three-tenths of one percent. The thing is, a mind blow is that even when, you know, like when you look at France, three-tenths of one percent. Italy, 2.6. Well, well, the... the Switzerland's not about to get into a trade war, so the franc might be fine. That's that's oh, where it is. I'm just no, that's no. where yeah. you have you know right. it's it's um, dollar index down like 300 ticks today, right? Right, right. Um, and the yuan, let's see. So I'm just you know uh, you, if you're lending the, money, you're getting three percent, but the value of the dollar is going down. The yuan off sure is almost getting to seven. Yeah, 6.9 percent. So this is a Chinese currency. Look at this, folks. So uh, 6.9. Now I forget. We were at 6.7 when I was in China a few weeks ago. Yep. But what I don't know is if this is the offshore versus, but I was, I was changing mine at 6.7. That's okay. the bottom line. So this, we pull this back. 
Is that one dollar get you six points? Yes, yeah, six point seven one to one U.S. dollar. Okay. So this is six point nine now, and it looks like the last high out here was uh, six point nine eight, right? So we'll see. You, you bust that baby, and let me pull this back further. Oh, well, this is interesting. This. I don't know how long they're tracking this. So that only brings it back to 2010. Okay, yeah. so they've only been tracking this 2010. But the highs since 2010 is 6.98, I guess. That that seven must be a psychological number. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you get you get that. Oh, I know the the the. Uh, MYL. Let's go into this uh, generic drug deal. Well, folks. if you want to start is... off, we'll start off with Myelin, but Teva is going to be the one that you want to jump to. Okay. Um, T E V A, I think. Yes. I think they're down about 13% today. They are at the forefront of the investigation going on. Yeah, check that out. Down two bucks. You were trading at 14.30. Now you're trading at 12.30. And look at this. I'll bring this like a 20 year monthly. <laughs> Oh, you don't even have to do that. Yeah. We said seventy-two dollars. Yes. On the f very put in a, that's pretty intense. It is pretty intense. So man. that's going after. That, uh, yeah. It must be going after. Uh, look at this. It's just this was down there in 2017, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ten dollars eighty-five. Ten dollars eighty-five cents. I was just gonna pull up the actual article. Where are we looking at? We're looking at it on the web or. Uh, nope, that's so not yeah, it. You said there was 44 yeah. states we can just pull up. that are going after the Here pharmaceuticals go. for yeah. uh, price fixing. So I didn't oh, catch... The generic yeah, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, big articles about this. It might have been mentioned on 60 Minutes, too. I'm not sure. I didn't catch it last night I was hearing, but either way, 44 states suing. Uh, 20 companies total, Teva and 19 others, 15 individuals actually named, which is pretty intense in terms of it's usually it's just companies, right? right? Literally 15 individuals that were at the key of carrying out this, screen, this scheme. Um, Teva coming out saying they're going to fight it. Well, surprise, surprise. Um, so Teva orchestrating a sweeping scheme with 19 other drug companies to inflate drug prices, sometimes more, by more than 1,000%, um, and stifle competition for generic drugs. And... Um, you got 44 states going after them, not a partisan ordeal. Uh, soaring drug prices from both branded and generics sparked outrage. You've seen a lot of congressional you know, panels, whatever, talking about it. Um, so 20 drug companies engaged in illegal conspiracies to divide up the market for drugs to avoid competing and in some cases conspire to either prevent prices from dropping or to raise them. Um, so that was filed on Friday by the U.S. District Court in Connecticut. And uh, let's see, the allegations of this new complaint, let's see, this Teva, that's Teva's response. 500-page lawsuit accusing the industry, which mainly sells medicines that are off-patent and should be less expensive, of a long history of discrete agreements to ensure the companies are supposedly um, mm -hmm. competitors each get a fair share. I mean, horrible. We're all paying for that. Oh, big um, time. Teva at the center of the conspiracy. The drug companies colluded to significantly raise, pri raise prices on 86 medicines between 2013 this. and 15. They've been paying 15. for forever. Yeah, and that's, this is just what they can prove, right? right. I mean, the, it's, it's pretty intense. Um, the drugs included everything from tablets to capsules to creams to ointments to conditions including diabetes, cholesterol, blood pressure, cancer, epilepsy. Um, yeah, pretty remarkable. Pretty remarkable. So, and the thing that's interesting, they, they have them, the allegation is they have 15 individuals as defendants who carried out the scheme day to day. So, yeah. you know, and they, you'd have to carry it out day one, to day right. because, it, because it's, you know, you, you can't keep prices high unless everyone is on board, man. Yeah. You know, it's like pretty intense. Yeah, generic drugs are one of the few bargains in the United States healthcare system, lawsuit said. However, it added prices for hundreds of generics have risen, while some have skyrocketed without explanation. Well, well there's your explanation. Yeah. There's your explanation. And our man Basil Chapman in the den, he was watching 60 Minutes getting ready last night, I think, and he's saying they had emails with the same day raising of the prices uh, by consensus. By consensus. I'm Everyone right. raise your hand. We good for higher prices? Boom. Yeah, <laughs> let's go, man. Let's Guilty. do it. Let's do it. Let's yeah. get it done. Amazing. Amazing. Um, CL, let's go take a look at that oil market. So oil still having a hard time catching price. You know, you had, you had a pop out here today to 63.33. Um, 532,000. Let me look at that. That might be some volume, though. Let okay. me see this. I think 900 is the number. Yeah. 
Where's like that? 800's about the number there. Yeah, that, then that's pushing a little. That, that's pushing with some volume. Though. Yeah, and yeah. you can see it, right? You get the action in the yeah. market, you get oh. the action in Saudi Arabia we're talking about with totally. the tankers, for sure. Totally. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's, it's both ways. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Nasdaq, uh, S&Ps, uh, still uh, bottom line is uh, no buyers out here. So, you know, what you had on Friday, you know, you, you, got, you got that bounce coming up, um, you know, supposedly because uh, I guess we were going to have some kind of a deal or the, the deal wasn't going to be uh, uh, as bad as uh, folks thought. Um, bottom line is that all these indices have volume. And it looks that, let's see, oh yeah, we're going to have expanded volume today. You're already at 19 uh, million in the NDX 100. Mark was definitely hoping that China wouldn't come out with specific retaliations by Monday morning, that's for sure, which is what we got. No doubt, yeah. no doubt. And, you know, we'll see with uh, the, the, the one deal out here, folks, that is not, well, let's put it this way, it's not on the table yet is the bond market, you know, because they're still buying bonds hand over fist, but you gotta remember something, China's the largest bond holder, you know. Now, I don't think they're gonna basically pull back, the reason being is that 
they have so much cash that they've been making so much money on this bond trade for like 10 years, it's insane. You know, but that, guess what? That'll be serious business. We did see. Yeah. Wasn't there a bond auction last week that was like abysmal? It, it, it was abysmal. the it, that, that was the so, weakest one in oh uh, since uh, 2007. You say we haven't seen any pullback. I yeah. would say maybe we have already. Yeah, no, that um, was the weakest one since 2007. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah, and that's important to wrap your head around. Um, yeah, you know, I wouldn't say that. The, 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 I think the main one of the main problems. I, I've said this a million times. You know, when, when a fight starts, then you forget how the fight started. And then it just keeps escalating. And that's kind of like where we are with these TAF wars. It's just, you know, you get an escalation over an escalation. And, uh, until all of us are paying a lot more money for goods, I don't think anything's going to change. And then you're going to have a, like a little social deal on your hands that all of a sudden we're realizing that, oh, where's our money? You're, yeah. you're paying more money for everything you're buying. And, you know, bottom line, you hit the pocketbook on the tax. The ironic part is that Trump did the big tax deal, but then this is another tax deal. You know, just because this is the other side of it, that we're going to pay more money versus the 2017 tax bill. I don't think the big tax deal was that big of a tax deal. Um, as in, nobody really saved a lot of money in the bottom half, and now they're going to pay a lot more. They're so there wasn't a, 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 a give and take for a lot of people. Stay right there, folks. we get Fast Market coming up next. And I'm man, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Look at him, folks.